on the news, Nigeria must remain as one, Buhari says, as the nation marks 60 years of independence. Journalists assaulted in anti-government protests in Lagos State. And Buckingham Palace cancels all events until 2021. Many thanks for joining us on News Now at this time. I am Oni Adekunle. Nigeria marks its 60th independence anniversary today with a colorful celebration and military parade at the Eagle Square in Abuja, the nation's capital. President Muhammad Buhari led other dignitaries, including former President Goodluck Jonathan and former military head of state Yakubu Gowan, to observe special performances commemorating the event. The parade was made up of the nation's armed forces, including the Army, Air Force and Navy, as well as the paramilitary forces. It also witnessed the display of traditional dances and other performances by combined military and civilian artists. The annual event, which is usually much more elaborate, had to be scaled down due to restrictions owing to the coronavirus pandemic. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari has again pledged his commitment to one united Nigeria as the nation marks its 60th Independence Day anniversary. In his early morning speech uh, addressed to the nation, the president recalled how Nigeria gained its independence from British colonial rule on October 1, 1960. Buhari called on all Nigerians to collectively resolve to continue the journey beyond 60 years, adding that the nation will be greater together than being smaller units of nationalities. More details are in this next report. It is the sixth Independence Day anniversary President Muhammad Buhari will be celebrating as the country's democratically elected leader. This year's celebration, themed Together at 60, was heralded with the unveiling of a special logo symbolizing the country's strengths and potentials. This formed the foundation of President Buhari's Independence Day address to the nation, Buhari, who harped on the need for national healing, said the nation's anniversary presents a genuine opportunity to eliminate old and outworn perceptions. The stereotype of thinking of ourselves as coming from one part of the country before seeing ourselves as Nigerians is a key starting point to project us on the road to our deserved nation's evolution and the integration. To start this healing process, we are already blessed with the most important asset any nation requires for such, our people. I am convinced that if we pursue our aspirations together, we would be able to achieve whatever we desire. Buhari also took time to reel out some of his administration's economic achievements so far, in the last three years, we have introduced unprecedented measures in support of the economy and to the weakest members of our society in the shape of A, trade our money, B, farm our money, C, school feeding program, D, job creation efforts, and E, agricultural intervention programs. No government in the first did what we are doing with such scarce resources. We have managed to keep things going in spite of the disproportionate spending on security. Those in the previous government from 1999 to 2015 who presided over the near destruction of the country have now the impudence to attempt to criticize our efforts. Nigeria's growth over the years is an issue that generates mixed reactions from citizens. Many Nigerians believe that the country still has a lot to achieve and they are charging the government to do more in its delivery of the dividends of democracy to all. We need to start teaching our young ones that there is need to build a nation where everyone can say, this is my own. No northerners, no southerners, no easterners, no westerners. We must, we, we must promote the attitude of oneness. They should, to a large extent, reduce their expenditure. 
so that they can free enough money for social development. And two, they should forget to a large extent paper policies. They should come around and do proper policy, plan for the youth. But you like it or not, the youth owns tomorrow. Activities for the Diamond Jubilee celebration was capped with a parade at the Eagle Square, Abuja, for the first time in 10 years. As Nigeria marks a Diamond Jubilee, opinions are sharply divided on whether there is need to roll out the drums in celebration or not. Some Nigerians at the nation's capital, Abuja, spoke to TV360 Nigeria on their perception of the nation after six decades. Our correspondent, Atinuke Nuke, completes the story. With 15 leaders that have been in charge of the country so far between 1960 and 2020, Nigeria has witnessed different phases of development and also challenges. It is the Independence Day, six decades of freedom from colonial masters. Surely the country has a lot to celebrate despite the diversity of its citizens. But what are the masses on the streets saying about the country's independence? Yes, it was it because there is nothing we don't have in this country. It's really worth it. It's just that though, how hmm, are we going to say, some of our leaders, they are the ones that really not need to stand on their own rights. They need to stand for us. Because there is nothing other countries have that we don't have. So it's really worth it. It's worth celebrating. The life we enjoyed from time past is better off than what we are enjoying now. So the life was good, it was better, but now that Nigeria was supposed to be, you know, when somebody gets old, you get old with a lot of experience. But now Nigeria gets old without experience, you know, which is too poor for us. Women have ruled this country for 60 years. And we have not seen any changes here. For me, no changes. Let's give women opportunity for six months. Because we have given men opportunity for, six, uh, for 60 years. Let's give me a position for six months. Let's see the changes. It is surely not all bad news. There are quite some notable achievements the country has made in the last 60 years. We should never despair. Many countries, if not all, had to go through some challenges at one time or the other in their lives. And this is our turn. So we should continue to uh, remain committed, focused, and determined. The level of um, socio-economic mismanagement in the country, you know, that also took our economy, you know, to ground zero, and we survived it as a nation. And today, the very daunting um, challenges of insecurity, you know, and uh, avoidable, avoidable divisions and, and signs of disunity. And yet we, are, we have remained together as a nation. I would think to all of those extent, we have a reason to celebrate. One thing that is important for raw Nigerians is to unite and build an enduring and sustainable nation. From Abuja, Atinuke Nuke, TV360. Meanwhile, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has again made calls to President Muhammadu Buhari on the need to rejig his cabinet. The opposition party said this in a statement signed by its spokesman, spokesperson, Kola Ologbodinho, in response to Buhari's Independence Day speech. PDP urged President Buhari to save the nation from collapse by using the occasion of the nation's anniversary to reposition his government and urgently address the economic and security challenges that have escalated under his watch. The Lagos State Police Command earlier today broke off several protests that were built to take place in the city as Nigeria marks its six-year Independence Day anniversary. The Inspector General of Police had warned against any form of protest across the country, but several groups had been planning to hold series of protests to, pr to press home uh, their various demands. Abisola Adebayo has more in this report. Well, we'll bring you that report in a bulletin subsequently. And moving on now, contrary to the opinion of some Nigerians criticizing the government, the Inter-Party Advisory Council, IPAC, says there is a lot to celebrate for the nation at 60. 
IPAC said this in Abuja at a press conference on the state of the nation at 60. The body said despite the challenges faced by Nigerians as a result of the dwindling economic fortunes and the hike in the price of fuel, the country is still great. It is 60 years of Nigeria's independence and the Inter-Party Advisory Council, IPAC, has been talking about the state of Nigeria's nationhood after six decades. The Inter-Party Advisory Council says federal government need to do more to deliver the dividends of democracy to the masses. The body addressed a wide range of issues including economy, electoral reform, health, education, and the fuel and electricity hike. I want government to be humane with its policies. Inter-Party Advisory Council, IPAC, sees regular fuel increase and electricity hike during this period when Nigerians are still struggling to cope with debilitating impacts from COVID-19 and its aftermath, a double blow of debt delivered on Nigerians. And we call on Mr. President to come to the aid of Nigerians. This notwithstanding, as a body housing all political parties in Nigeria, we remain committed to the high mission of consolidating and deepening elections, democracy, political stability, overall political well-being of Nigerians, partaking in elections organized by INEC, and ensure that we have an environment conducive for successful elections in the country. It is 60 years of nationhood. Do Nigerians really have something to celebrate? Nigeria is a miracle today. There's no country that is as great as this country. We have traveled extensively. We know what obtains globally. This country is one of the most beautiful, beautiful countries you can find in the whole world. There's nothing that is not here. All we need to do basically is to get ourselves together and live in harmony. So we have had several good things that come the way of this country. We are here today. There are some countries where you go, you can't even, you can't even come out from your own house. You were here today that despite all the economic situation, we are still eating, we are still breathing. So Nigeria is a blessed place. Nigeria is a good place. So straight to your question, there's so many goodies that has come the way of Nigeria. And we are proud and happy to be Nigerians. And this is a great time for us. And we are glad we are celebrating 60 years. IPA calls on Nigerians to support the electoral reform that will lead to a total reformation of the electoral process and guarantee free and fair elections. From Abuja, Sunjoye, TV Patricia News. And just like Nigeria, China also celebrates its National Day on October 1st of every year. Chinese nationals in Lagos is marked their independence anniversary in a low key due to COVID-19 restrictions against mass gatherings. To commemorate the day, members of the Herxin Arts Troupe Nigeria, made up mostly of Nigerians, treated spectators who virtually joined to, this, to a display of arts and culture. This next report has the details. Aside being strong trade allies, Nigeria and China got their independence on the same day, October 1st. This shared attribute is the reason for this display of arts and cultural heritage. The event began with a display of rich Nigerian vocational practices like farming and fishing. Spectators were also treated to a show of the popular Ayo masquerade and music presentations. The colorful occasion was also used to celebrate the Mid-Autumn Festival, which is the second most important Chinese holiday after the Chinese New Year. From the classical lion masquerade performance to the dragon dance, and a long fan act. Chinese nationals in Nigeria who joined virtually were brought closer to home. As has been the practice during previous celebrations, a generous donation to support schools and the less privileged in Nigeria is made by the Chinese community in the country. Children is the future, is hope. So far we are there here in Nigeria. This part of our culture. I know now business is not too good, but we also declare we are support more for students. For the past four years, I have been representing to collect this check for the less privileged country. 
um, on those states, that's Ogun states, Imo states, Abia states, um, Gombe states, and other states have benefited. And I use this opportunity to express our gratitude and thanks to Nigeria, to uh, the People's Republic of China, for the relationship that has existed between the two countries, which has been shown today being the National Day as it has been in the past. While Nigeria is celebrating her 60th anniversary, the People's Republic of China are marking their 71st year since independence. Fidele Aguncha, TV360, Lagos. Let's now take you back to that report about protests which were shelved in Lagos State today. This is what protesters from one of the civil society groups met at the point where their protest was supposed to hold armed policemen. The policemen took over the venue, making sure the protesters did not gain access and were unable to assemble. Left with no other choice, the group dispersed, vowing to reassemble some other time. In another part of Lagos, scores of protesters trooped to Maryland Ojota Axis, expressing their displeasure against bad governance. But again, the policemen were on ground to disperse them. About 30 of the protesters were arrested. And in the ensuing scuffle between the security operatives and the protesters, a photojournalist identified as Olukayo de Jayola was reportedly brutalized by the police. Not willing to risk a face-off with the police, another group, Coalition of Odua Self-Determination Groups, called this press conference here to make their demands. The colleague of Nigeria, say Singapore, say India, that got independence at the same time like Nigeria. If you look at the rate at which they aspire and achieve a better life for their people, they are far ahead of Nigeria. And we have investigated and come to the conclusion that uh, Nigeria has become a body to all the ethnic groups in Nigeria. If we reorganize Nigeria, it may potent well for us. But if we don't, we will get to a point in our life where every ethnic group will be urging other ethnic groups responsible for their woes. The group leader also urged the government to find lasting solutions to the security and economic challenges plaguing the country. It's not an illegitimate way that I don't want to be part of Nigeria again. What we are saying is that uh, we are saying that uh, Nigeria will get to a point where a Yoruba man will hold another ethnic group responsible for his war. And we are going to that point. We have been warning, we have been saying this. There are claims all over the, all over the country. And it is the way we run Nigeria that led to it. And political class still felt consciously unconsciously that there's a magic they can perform with this structure. You can't perform any magic with this structure. The best time we ever prospered in this country was between 60 and, uh, 60 and 66. We may have to go back to that. We may have to begin to talk about things. And if we don't talk about it, it got to a point where Yoruba land, in fairness to us, is gradually becoming a low-scale war region. You, like other region, killings every day. So if you get to a point that we are to it, where it has become a popular consciousness, there's a need for you to be guarded. Mobocracy will take it over if you don't do that. And that's the role we are playing now. President Muhammad yes. Buhari had earlier so, addressed the nation, calling for unity and country. understanding as the country struggles to deal with its economic challenges. Abisola Adebayo, TV 360, Lagos. Well, let's take a break here for still to come. Buhari defends fuel price hike, says it makes no sense to sell fuel cheaper than Saudi Arabia. In the last three years, we have built a multi-purpose center, which is the envy of all in our constituency. 
and I can tell you that the people who are living there are already enjoying it. Guy, do you think what this man just said is true? See, I seriously doubt. I'm sure it's one of those that are silly lies. And wait, do you know there's a way to find out if these things he's saying is true or not? Ah. This is the construct app. It gives people like us a sure way to track implementation of constituency projects. It gives valid and verified information on location of projects, amounts allocated, amounts funded, the level of job done, and even the profiles of concerned legislators. You and I can post directly on this app. Are you serious? This is the go-to app if you want to know how our commonwealth is being expended by the government. Wow. Let's even see if what this man said is true. Show me. The Construct app is developed by Other People Nigeria with support from USAID and is available on both Google Play Store and Apple Store. Eh, and it's true. <laughs> of course, I told you. Glad to have you back. Now, here is a reminder of some of our top stories tonight. Nigeria marks its 60th independence anniversary today with a colorful celebration and military parade at the Eagle Square in Abuja, the nation's capital. President Muhammadu Buhari was joined by other dignitaries, including former leaders of the country, to observe special performances commemorating the event. The parade was made up of the nation's armed forces, including the Army, Air Force and Navy, as well as the paramilitary forces. The Lagos State Police Command earlier today broke off several protests that were built to take place in the city as Nigeria marks its 60th independence anniversary. The Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, had warned against any form of protest across the country. Several groups had been planning to hold series of protests to press home various demands. Say tomorrow, see day on. What's your tomorrow? Uh, community meeting now. Huh? You know they here, Abby. Now, beg you. See, if we meet from my house inside Palo, then go no. This uh, COVID 19 is not a choice to play. If you want to elect a new secretary, we fit to do one for WhatsApp or, or for Skype or even on Zoom. Hmm? Or, or we just wait. I will not negotiate. Uh, uh, this uh, social distancing, it is non negotiable. Yeah. Not every infected person shows symptoms, but every infected person is contagious. Avoid large gatherings and self-isolate if you think you might have come in contact with a carrier. Your safety and the safety of others is in your hands. This message is from the Akin Fateh Foundation in partnership with the National Orientation Agency with support from MacArthur. Let's now turn our attention to the COVID-19 pandemic. And the total coronavirus infections in Nigeria rose to 58,848 after 201 new cases were reported on Wednesday. The fresh cases are reported from 13 states with Lagos leading with 77 cases. According to the Nigeria Center for Disease Control Tally, 50,358 infected persons have recovered and have been discharged across the 36 states and the federal capital territory. However, one more death was recorded on Wednesday, increasing the country's death toll to 1,112. And in a bid to stem the spread of COVID-19 in the United Kingdom, Buckingham Palace has announced that it will not hold any large-scale events until next year. According to reports, officials worry they won't be able to accommodate large numbers of people at the palace due to coronavirus social distancing requirements. Earlier this month, Prime Minister Boris Johnson revealed that hundreds of uh, medical workers and community heroes will be recognized in the Queen's birthday honors next month. Well, let's take another break here and return with Business International and Sports Stories.
Welcome back. Now, President Mohamed Buhari has announced an adjustment of petroleum prices in Nigeria, saying the country will now sell at 161 naira per litre. In his broadcast to the nation on the occasion of Nigeria's 60th independence anniversary, Buhari noted that the price of fuel was still far cheaper in Nigeria than in neighboring oil producing countries. He justified the fuel price hike by his government, arguing that a responsible government must take tough decisions in the interest of the country. Petroleum prices in Nigeria are to be adjusted. We sell now at 161 naira per liter. A comparison with our neighbors will illustrate the point. A. Chad, which is an oil producing country, charges 362 naira per liter. B. Niger, also an oil producing country, sells one liter at 346 naira. C. Ghana, another oil producing country, petroleum pump price is 326 naira per liter. Further afield, Egypt charges 211 naira per liter. Saudi Arabia charges 168 naira per liter. It makes no sense for oil to be cheaper in Nigeria than in Saudi Arabia. We're moving on now to the foreign scene. Lebanon and Israel have agreed to hold U.S. brokered negotiations on their disputed land and maritime borders, which is the first talks in decades between two countries technically still at war. In a statement by Lebanon's parliament speaker, Nabil Berry, the United States will act as a facilitator during the talks, which is to be held in the southern Lebanon border town of Nakora. Continuous talks will also be held at the United Nations headquarters on the issue of maritime border between both countries. And in sports, Paul Pogba has returned to the France court for the first time since June last year after coach Didier de Champs included him for the upcoming friendly against Ukraine. The Ban star had been set to return to the squad last month for France's first games in the last edition of the Nations League, but was first to withdraw after testing positive for COVID-19. Boba has also been included in the UEFA Nations League double header against Portugal and Croatia. Well, with that, we've come to the end of news now. Thank you so much for watching and happy Independence Day.